This is a short video showing you how I'd use mastery learning in my classroom. Let's first look at the typical classroom. It starts with a set of objectives, what we call Unit 1. During the time in class, time is spent with notes, labs, activities, and then at the end of the objectives, or the end of the unit, the student will take a test. Let's say the student gets a D. Then the second unit begins. Second unit, same idea, objectives, labs, notes, activities, all those things in between, and they take a test, and this time they get a B. So now they're averaging between a B and a D. And this process continues in the typical classroom. Objectives, notes, labs, test. So now I've got my grades, a C, B, and a D, and there's nothing really I can, I can do about them. And so the process continues on. Let's compare that to my mastery uh, classroom. So in the beginning, same as uh, the typical classroom, starts with objectives on unit one. In class, we talk about notes, labs, activities, all those things to try to cement the ideas. And at the end of it, they take, a, just like a typical classroom, a test. And on the test, same grade as before, they get a D. Now, the second unit begins. Unit two, objectives, and during this time, it's notes, labs, and activities, tests. So all the stuff on the left is inside of class. But outside the class, the student has a choice. They can actually do a mastery assignment. And the mastery assignment is a set of questions they must complete. These questions relate to difficulties that I've seen in the past relating to the test. Turning in the mastery assignment on time gives them the right to take a mastery test. The mastery test is a second test on the same set of objectives, but it's a different set of questions. It even, might even be a, a different format. And on this mastery test that they take, let's say they, they do a good job on it. And on this new test, they get an A. Now, it's on the same set of objectives. It's just different questions or a different format. So they're just demonstrating a different way that they know the material. So what I'll do is I'll replace their D with an A. And all that happens outside of class. But inside of class, the classroom itself and what's normally going on in class, we're still doing everything as usual. Unit 2, notes, labs, activities, and a test. So outside of class is the mastery stuff. Inside of class, it's what you normally see in a, in a typical uh, classroom. And this whole process continues. So we go on to Unit 3. At the same time, students have the option of taking the mastery assignment. They're not forced to. It's always their choice. And then if they turn it in on time, they can take the mastery test. Again, all this outside of class. Class, the typical classroom, typical assignments, just like normal. Let's say this time on the mastery test, they get a C plus. Not as good as before. So what I do is, well, there's lots of reasons why they might score lower, but what I'm going to do is just throw away the C+. So it's as if it didn't happen, and I'll just keep the B. I'll keep the higher of the two grades. And in class, we continue on as always. So the important point here is that the mastery stuff occurs outside of class. It's independent work outside of what's going on in class. All right, so let's kind of recap everything that's going on with mastery learning in my class. The mastery assignments have deadlines. The mastery assignments must be completed, not just attempted, but they've got to complete, be completed, which means students need to get help either from me or from someone else, but it's got to be completed. When they turn them in, that's when they'll see all the answers and they check them on their own. I don't go through and give them a whole lot of feedback. It's up to them to do all that process and take the ownership of what's going on. Mastery assignments are worked on outside of class time. They are extra work. It's not part of something that happens in the class. It's outside the class. Students cannot take the mastery test without turning in the mastery assignment on time. I do make exceptions if there's illness in the family or if the student's been sick or something else is going on, but generally for the typical student, on time is the answer. Mastery tests are different questions on the same set of objectives. It's just another way of showing they know the knowledge. No mastery tests are on the last test of a semester. At the end of the semester, we've got to cut things off, so that's one drawback to the way we do everything. When I kept um, and analyzed the data, not seven, but... When I kept and analyzed the data, the typical student saw one and a half letter grade increases. So if they were a C before the mastery test, after the mastery test, they were usually an A student. Typically, seven out of eight students who took the mastery test saw an increase in their grade. And that's how I use mastery learning in my classroom.